The PJ Flex Show is brought to you by Cub Foods and Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota. It's the PJ Flex Show with Hobie RT, Ron Johnson, and Justin Gard. Let's row the boat. It's not much fun if you're not prepared, you're not confident, you're not in the right positions. Uh, and, and a lot of guys have been in those positions before. They had to fail to get there. They had to succeed to get there. They needed that leather skin, that, that confidence to get to the point uh, where they are right now. Does that mean we've arrived? No way. we got a long way to go. We, I mean, we have such a long way to go. But what I love about this team, and I said this at the beginning of the year, is they're fun to coach. Well, it's a good beat to listen to after the Gophers beat back-to-back -back Big Ten opponents, and we're here to discuss it on the P.J. Fleck Show. Joined, as always, by Gophers head coach P.J. Fleck and former Gopher Ron Johnson, KFA and Justin Gard. I'm Hobie Arteague, and coach, your team 2-0 in the last two Big Ten games, including that big win over Nebraska that last week. That one seemed to carry a little extra oomph to it whenever we listen to your uh, post-game press conference. So um, <laughs> I have to ask you, how important was that win in your estimation over the Huskers moving forward into the rest of the season now yeah it was a one game championship season against nebraska if we wanted to be one and oh and that's how big it is right every every week's a championship season uh championship game and all of our energy gets directed into that thought our guys prepared really hard against a really good and well-coached nebraska team and um, found a way to win and that's at the end of the day that's what matters and they found a way to get it done and, and did it with a lot of people who are, are getting either their first chance uh or have really stepped up into big roles yeah, hey, coach, Chris Altman Bell is back. He's healthy once again. When you look at the games where he had to go out, so the game plan was kind of around him, then he gets hurt, and now he's back physically, looked good, had a great catch. How, how different is it with him on the field? Uh, he's one of your best players, you know. I mean, uh, listen, as a, as a coach, you know, when you got really good players, you're a really good coach. And at times when you don't have that, you're not, very good, you're not a very good coach. Uh, he's a tremendous football player. We got really good players on this team. Uh, a lot of skill everywhere, uh, and they've really taken that skill and, and mixed it with the talents they have on and off the field and uh, how hard they work, and he's a, he's a prime example of that. I mean, he's, um, he's a leader on this football team, and he's made a ton of plays for us. He's played a lot of football, and he's led that room. He, and, again, he's been on the field, been off the field, been hurt, been healthy, and we just look for some consistency uh, from that, and I hope that he gets some consistency from that. Uh, with the health wise because he's a really good player. He was key to the first half offensively. Tanner Morgan finding an unbelievable rhythm. 16 consecutive completions at one point. Had one throw in the second half that he himself would like to have back. But what allowed Tanner to get into such a rhythm on Saturday? I think we were incredibly balanced on offense. You know, running the ball really well. Our play action pass was really good. Our RPO game I thought was really solid. I thought the game plan Mike Sanford and Matt Simon put together and our offensive staff was spot on with what we had to do to be able to beat Nebraska. And, we talked all week about efficient execution. You're going to have to execute, but do it really efficiently. And I thought we were able to do that. And a lot of guys made plays, whether it was Michael Brown Stevens, Chris Altman Bell here, or Brevin Span Ford, or Cole Kramer, and uh, there was Bryce Williams, or our running backs, or Tanner. I mean, everybody got involved. And that's what it's going to have to look like as we continue to move forward. And Coach Tanner really critical of himself after the game with those INTs. What was the big change, in your opinion, from the first half to the second half? Was Nebraska doing anything different to kind of throw off the passing game a little bit? I mean, the first interception he throws, it's a great read. It's a yeah. great play. I mean, we have a guy open down the sideline. It's just a little underthrown. Uh, both wide out and our quarterback could have been a little bit better there. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it was kind of a perfect situation for what we wanted to be able to do. It's just, um, just a little underthrown. We still got to be able to find a way to make a play on that football. And then the second interception is just he didn't see the guy underneath on the underneath coverage. And that's the one that you really want back. The other one's an aggressive play, and it turns into a punt. You got to look at it as it turns into a punt. Uh, and that was the worst thing that could have happened to us. So if you punted, the ball went into the end zone. Uh, so, again, it, it, I, thought, I thought he threw the ball really well. We got into rhythm early, and I think that was key to him having the success that he had uh, in that first half. And then when you get to the second half, it just seemed like we were always chasing a third and one or a fourth and one. And, the field position just didn't allow us to go for it, uh, and we didn't execute it. So there was about five or six empty possessions in that second half that that really, really hurt us. Uh, but there was a lot of – we weren't efficient enough on first and second down to provide those, those third and ones and fourth and ones to be able to be first downs. 
Well, you mentioned the running game, and they did extremely well collectively down the top two backs in your backfield, but still found a way to get rolling on the ground. Bryce Williams going for over 100 yards. Bucko, Irving, and Kai Thomas each getting seven carries. All three guys got in on that first drive of the game against Nebraska, but you gave Bryce the start. He's, of course, the veteran guy, but, Coach, he only had five carries this season before Saturday. What gave you the confidence in Bryce to put him in that position, to get him out there first and really set the tone while also finishing that game in the fourth quarter? where he had that breakaway touchdown run? Well, Bryce is one of the most selfless people you'll ever meet. I mean, he's been here four years. Uh, he's still got multiple years of eligibility left, and he's accepted his role. Uh, he's a guy that's the ultimate teammate, knows that his turn will come, works just as hard as Muhammad Ibrahim and Trey Potts, and, and understands that there's other guys that are going to be in that role and get the ball as well. But he's the ultimate teammate. I mean, he's incredibly selfless, does not care about who gets the credit, and he's always stayed ready. He had a big game against Wisconsin back in 2018 when a lot of our running backs went out, and he's he's always there for you. He's Mr. Reliable, and uh, he's a great blocker on third down, and that's where his role has been on more third down. But now that we're at the position we are at running back, he's getting a lot more carries on first and second down and is taking advantage of all that. Do you have that button that you had mentioned on Saturday? And was the story behind it? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, hold on. It's right here on my coffee table. There hey, he is. Hey, you said it was there, and there it is. There he is. There he is, cute as a button. Young Bryce. Yeah, that guy. I love it. All right? As and a that's Pat the piece that gave you the confidence. It's called a little Apache back then. That's what it says. So, uh, but that, that his mom gave that to me when he committed. And, uh, you know, there's tokens and trinkets in this uh, in this office. It kind of looks like a third-grade classroom, my head, my head coach office here in um, but there's always these little things from recruiting that parents give you that means so much to them and they share it with you and you keep it in your office because, you know, these guys are more than football players to me and our staff and, and to each other. I mean, they're people and Bryce going to be very, very successful whether he plays football uh, as he continues to move forward or doesn't. He's going to have an unbelievable career in whatever he chooses. Uh, and, you know, he's got an unbelievable family. So these guys are more than just football players. Yeah, Coach, when you look at the running back, so Coach Burns, one, has done a great job because when you have a lot of freshmen playing, there's a lot of extra work. I remember being a freshman, asking my coach a ton of questions, even mid-game sometimes. And so when you look at Irving and Thomas, what you know, you had to rely on those guys a lot. Well, one, are, is there, are their mothers going to bring you a pin now too? And then, you know, how was that relying on those freshmen this last game? <laughs> Uh, in terms of the gifts, I've got little things with those guys as well, but maybe not a button from, I don't even know if they do these anymore. That's the thing. You're a little older than some of those young guys, uh, but you know, we, we just have to be ready uh, at the running back position. Everybody's got to be ready for their call, their number to be called. And I know they will be coach Burns does a great job of preparing the whole room and the running back position. Uh, we, we've been banged up, but uh, this is a great opportunity, not only for now, but the future of our program. And these guys got to take advantage of that opportunity. And I know they will. The Wildcat formation has been huge for you guys, really your entire tenure here, PJ. And I remember vaguely, all the way back in the Ohio State game, you had Moe and Trey at one point running the Wildcat. You've had to switch some things because they're no longer available. When did you settle in on Cole Kramer as a Wildcat option, and what has he meant for that role in that part of the offense? You know, we've had him, uh, we've had him in that role since the offseason. Did a little bit in spring ball. Obviously, we didn't show it, but we did it with Moe and Trey, and that was going to be our number one option. But, you know, just in football, you've got to have option A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and go right down the alphabet because you just never know what that season is going to bring. So we had a contingency plan with those two, with Cole Kramer, and he's been working on it. You know, he's a quarterback, too, so it makes it easy to make that change. He's an aggressive runner. Uh, he's still a young player. And he's only going to get better with time in that role. Uh, but I'm just really proud of the progress he's made. And I thought Matt Simon and, and Mike Sanford done a really good job of, of, of expanding that role of that Wildcat package as we continue to go forward. Well, Cole is uh, a quarterback who threw a touchdown pass, of course, out of the Wildcat, ran the ball well, too. That's something Adrian Martinez has done well all season for Nebraska, but your defense held him in check for the most part after he had toned up opposing defenses all season long. I mean, what can you say about your defense uh, that hasn't been said already with the way they played against the Huskers? And also, is this one of the most cohesive units you feel you've had on campus? Well, I think we've talked about all year about this complementary football, whether it's offense, defense, or special team. But within the defense, this complementary play for each other has really been on display, I think, the entire year. doesn't mean we're perfect, but it's a really fun team to coach. And this is what I meant by uh, talking earlier in the year, that these are really fun players and fun people to coach because they give you everything they have. Are they perfect? They're going to win every game? Obviously not. But they play so hard and play for each other. And Joe Roski, our defensive coordinator, and Joe Harris-Simiak, our co-DC, they deserve a lot of credit amongst our, uh, our entire defensive staff 
uh, for putting our players in position to be the best they can be. And I think that's what coaches can do. And then it becomes a player's game. I mean, we got really good players over there uh, and they play really hard and you can rotate eight defensive linemen and it only makes you better. Uh, we've got really good linebackers and, and secondary guys that can keep, keep the top on the coverage and have learned from their mistakes. So it's a fun team to coach. Again, doesn't promise every win, but it's a fun team to coach because they, they love to grow. They love to learn and they love to play for each other and play that complimentary style that they understand how the D line affects the linebackers, linebackers affect the secondary and so on and so forth. Yeah, coach. And being at the game, it's kind of cool to see the fans react to goal line stands. And when you see the, you know, the turnover on downs, you know, how much is that a confidence builder, but also how much do the players feed off the uh, fans when they know like they're behind them on these kind of stands? Oh, absolutely. I think that's critical. I mean, we have very educated fans and they know how important those goal line stands are uh, to the way we play football here at the University of Minnesota. You know, uh, I think everybody talks about the fourth down play, but this play right here, I think was one of the biggest plays in the game and being able to stand, you know, Adrian Martinez up at the goal line, um, you know, and, and, and then obviously the fourth down play, but this was the, I think the biggest play uh, of that drive and of that game that really showed that we kept them out of the end zone. And uh, you know, our fans understand that it really helps our players to be able to hear that they know what that means and uh, watch them respond. You've understood that you're going to be in narrow games. You've talked about it all off season. The last two weeks, pretty narrow games. You finished one on defense. You finished one on offense. What have you seen from your team in terms of finishing those games this year? Well, I think, again, we have a very educated team that they know how to win and, and what it takes to win. And a lot of guys have played a ton of football for us. So we talked about this word narrow all off season since January. And, you know, we just knew that somehow, some way, we we're going to play really close games in the Big Ten. If you go back to 2019 when we were 11 and two, I mean, I think we were seven and one in one possession games. And that's what we talk about with what that narrow means. And you guys have been to practices. We have narrow periods where we truly take situational football amongst the entire country uh, from years past and put them in that position of going to end a game, win a game, uh, go put a, you know, uh, you know, uh, find a way to finalize the game. And, and they've been able to embrace that, make that part of us. Do we want every game to win by one touchdown if we can? I mean, <laughs> No, but if that's what it takes, we have to be good enough to do that. Um, and, and they've been three and one in those games, so somewhat good and get a chance to learn from our past to create our future in a negative way as well. So, um, you know, I'm just proud of this team of how far they've come and we're halfway through the season and we got a lot to accomplish and we got to keep getting better because, uh, you know, there's so much that we can improve on and our players understand that. Well, still more to come here on the PJ Flex Show as we take a look at what is ahead for the Gophers. Well, we know what Maryland does. Don't know if they're going to be bringing the cat crab cakes, but they are going to be bringing some football to Minnesota this weekend. We take a look at the Terps and Talia Tugavailoa to get a preview of this game this weekend. That and more when we return on the PJ Flex Show. Let's row the boat. You're watching the PJ Flex Show. Well, it's another home game this weekend for the Gophers as Maryland comes to town. Coach, they started off the season 4-0, but have lost back-to-back -back with losses to Iowa and Ohio State. Last year's game between you two was a tight one that went down to the end. But what stands out this year about what you've seen from the Terps in your preparation so far? Very similar from years past, our quarterback. Uh, number three does it all. He can throw it. He can run it. You can tell that he has complete command of the offense, gets the ball to his playmakers in space. They got a lot of athletes and, and they get the ball in space. They make you cover sideline to sideline. Uh, and then their defense, they're very deep at a lot of positions. So um, very athletic football team. They've done a great job recruiting. Their two losses happen to be to two of the best teams in our league. Uh, and one of, them, one of them against Iowa, they turned the ball over, I think, six, seven times. So it wasn't really a, a, a true uh, evaluation of how good they are. Um, so again, we've got to play our best football. This is a team that you know beat us last year in overtime at third place. Uh, every year is its own entity. It's a different football team than last year with us and them. But their quarterback makes everything go, that's for sure. Yeah, and you look at, you know, Talia Tagovailoa and what he does for this offense. He's made progress, and he's played okay in some games, and in other games he's turned the ball over. Granted, it was Iowa. Iowa makes everybody turn the ball over. But what have you seen from him, and what do you guys have to do to try to stop him? Well, com com complete command of the offense. I mean, he's got such great leadership qualities. And he's not just a runner and, or just a passer. He's both. He can hurt you on the ground uh, and he can hurt you with his arm. Uh, he, he has an unbelievable uh, 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 
arm talent. He's accurate. Uh, he's got a lot of juice behind his arm. Um, he knows his offense really well, and he's got playmakers on the outside. Your defense is very different than the one that went to Maryland last year, but you do have a lot of guys that have played uh, played Maryland. Does that experience help knowing what they want to do offensively, what the quarterback wants to do, and the fact that a lot of them have gone up against them? And they've seen what can go wrong if you don't follow what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, when you go back and look at last year, uh, you know, our personnel, they had personnel, we had personnel. Um, you know, basically there's no fans in the stands. It's, it's a COVID year. But um, it, it came down to the wire, and the whole story of the game was number three. I mean, he was the best player on the field that day, and everybody knew it. And he made sure everybody knew it, too. Hmm. So I think when you kind of look back at that game, it really comes down to being able to contain him. I don't think you ever stop him, but you got to be able to contain him somehow, some way. Uh, and you got to be able to put up a lot of points against Maryland. Yeah, Coach, you're coming off of a bye, you guys were able to knock off uh, Nebraska. And then they're coming off a bye now, Maryland coming here. What, what do you have to worry about a team who's coming off of a fresh week? Well, they get a chance to get healthy. You know, they get a chance to get healthy. They get a chance to prepare for you for two weeks instead of one. But everybody gets bye weeks. Bye weeks come at different times. Uh, that can't just be the deciding factor. We've got to find a way to be able to do our preparation better than we did it last week and the week before and the week before that. So our change, our best philosophy is, is in – you know, being plugged in this week, no matter what. And uh, we got to be at our best Saturday. Well, still much more to come with Coach Fleck heading into this week's game against Maryland coming up after the break. Hopefully it's another exciting finish like we saw last weekend with that moment right there. We <laughs> chat about it when we return here on the PJ Fleck Show on Fox 9. Welcome back to the P.J. Flex Show. Let's row the boat. Welcome back to the P.J. Flex Show along with Gophers head coach P.J. Fleck, Ron Johnson, and Justin Gard. I'm Hobie Arteague. And coach, you were in the moment last weekend, and we saw that excitement after the win against Nebraska, celebrating with a guy who's pretty much by your side after every game on the field in the press conferences, and that's Officer McElroy, a U of M officer and also a former Gopher offensive lineman. Take us into that moment right there where you just see him and just celebrate immediately. Well, we do it every week. You guys just <laughs> everyone wants to talk about it this week. We do. We celebrate the wins. I mean, he, he has been with, uh, with our team and been with me and, and Heather, I mean, since we got here. And you talk about one of the most selfless people and uh, who lives a life of serving and giving in this community. And, and he loves the Gophers. And he's always around me. Um, you know, on the road trips and he's always around me on the home trips. Uh, we have a lot of conversations because, you know, I mean, he's always by me. So him and I probably talk more than most. Uh, and I know that he cares so much about our program. And when we win, he wins, you know, and he's an alum and just like Ron. And, and it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I want, I want guys to really be excited about what's going on in our program and, and share that experience with us, our alum as well. And, and, uh, he's an officer and he's a police officer and, He's with us, but he's still an alum. And when he's around that, when he's around that environment, uh, you know, we do that every week, though. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I give him a big high five and a hug every single week when we win. And, um, just happened to got on camera, I think, this time. You can tell he's an offensive lineman, too, because you got some good contact in the chest, and he really didn't budge at he all. He didn't flinch. It was like a <laughs> yeah, fly. He had a lot of protection on underneath that shirt, too. I mean, he's got, <laughs> he probably never felt it either. So... Yeah, Coach, I mean, your celebrations, I mean, I, I was a recipient one time, me and Eric Decker after the Penn State game. So I, I do, and I didn't have a bulletproof vest on, so I felt it. Um, but when you look at that Penn State game and a guy who had a great game, Rashad Bateman, he finally got to play uh, for the Baltimore Ravens after his injuries. How fun was that watching him make his debut in the NFL? Just tremendous. I mean, he had, he had five catches, I think four for first downs. I mean, it's a great debut for him, and as he continues to get more comfortable and play more games, I think everybody's going to expect a lot from him um, over the next coming weeks. But it's so good to see him on that field because when you recruit these young men, you hear their dreams and hopes and aspirations. And, and when you watch number 12 on the field with the Ravens, you just, you're just so excited for him because that was his ultimate dream. And our job is to, as a coach, take them from where they were to where they want to be and put the blueprint. We don't do the work for them. They have to do that. But you give them the blueprint – and then they go out there and execute it, and people are going to be really excited about the career he has, and he's just getting started. 
And coach, it took a while for him to get on the field. Obviously, probably some frustration on his end, especially as a rookie, because you have a great college career. You want to make an impact right away. Did you did you converse with him at all during that time before he got a chance to make his debut? Yeah, we talked. I mean, we talked right after his injury and we talked uh, throughout uh, the entire time. And, you know, I mean, injuries are something that's part of this game. And, you know, when somebody hasn't been injured a lot and you start getting injured and it's very difficult to deal with. Uh, but he's got he's got a great mindset and he knows that, you know, if he just kept his oar in the water, kept rowing that boat. He's going to be fine. And he's done that. Uh, so, again, he's healed up. He's ready to roll. And he proved that the other night. And like I said before, I think Ravens fans are going to be really excited about him. Uh, in the future. I want to go back to the celebrations in our final minute or so, Coach. We, obviously, winning is hard. You have to celebrate every victory. You guys, I, I'm, I'm not in the locker room. I'd say I'm locker room adjacent. It's <laughs> the wildest locker room scene I've ever seen or been a part of when you guys win. When did you start making it a point to, to really bring everybody in, to include everybody, and to make sure that every victory is celebrated like you all do? Uh, w well, when? Yeah. Um, Western Michigan, when you're 0 and 8, 0 and 9, 0 and 10, and you finally win a game, yeah. and you never take winning for granted ever again. And I made an oath that day that no matter what, we're going to celebrate if we win on Saturday in the locker room and for that 24 hour rule. Sometimes it's 12 hours, but in the locker room, you're going to think we won the Super Bowl no matter who we play because winning's so hard, it's very difficult. And people who have played sports understand that. It's very difficult to get that result. And a lot goes into the week. And a lot has to be overcome for that to happen. So that, that's the week's mission, the week's goal. To get that win. We're going to celebrate it. We're going to end it. And then we're going to move on. But a lot of people, you know, it's it's kind of like, uh, you know, it, it's very difficult to, you got to, when, when, when you talk about change your best and nothing's ever good enough and, you know, you're constantly in this competitive environment, you got to find a way to celebrate the moments you win and the, the moments that feel really good because if you don't, it all runs together. And I've never seen a bad loss in that locker room. <laughs> yeah. Bad loss on film on Sunday, but I've never seen a bad loss in a locker room. And uh, I never plan on starting that anytime soon. Well, coach, hopefully you can get a win against Maryland this weekend. Best of luck against the Terps. Appreciate it. Rose Bush, Go Gophers.